This was an exit from what was Birmingham New Street Station. It's now called Grand Central Station. And I used to walk out of here once a week in 1972 with my gran, who would be going to hand in her Spot the Ball coupon from the Birmingham Evening Mail. On this site was Manzoni Gardens, named after Sir Herbert Manzoni, who presided over the sort of brutalist restructuring of Birmingham, the demolition of Victorian Birmingham. And in this square was a massive statue by the pop artist Nicholas Munro of the legendary cinema ape King Kong. <laughs> It was part of a scheme in 1972 whereby cities were given the opportunity to own a piece of public art. They had it for six months and they could buy it. Birmingham rejected the statue. Lord Nelson's column should be there to be stand up for. What does that represent? Nothing. You think it's a waste of money then? I certainly do, yes. I hope, the, I hope Birmingham don't buy it. Birmingham seems to have a great history of rejecting its culture. And when I started thinking about a way of telling the story of the Nightingales and Rob Lloyd and the prefects, this seemed like the entry point to me. And in tonight's programme, particular favourites of mine, and for those of you who remember the prefects with affection, the Nightingales. We live in a culture where mediocrity is rewarded and originality and integrity are punished. And John Peel said of the Nightingales that years after all the other groups of their era had been revealed as charlatans and chancers, someone would finally recognise that they were one of the greatest bands. Whether that will happen or not, I don't know. But what I do want to understand is how Rob Lloyd kept that group going for over four decades in the face of commercial and critical indifference. I always used to think that when when I pegged it, all of a sudden people would buy the records and pretend they liked us all along. But I begin to worry that what if I peg it and they still don't buy the records? <laughs> <laughs>